Let's dive straight into it now. Joining me now is political journalist John Fund. John, thanks so much for joining us on the U.S. Report. And Joe Biden is going to be wanting to use some momentum from the Democrats' strong election night results this week to turn things around for himself. But... Talk us through what's going on here, because polling numbers aren't in his favor. According to a New York Times Siena poll, President Biden is trailing Trump in five of the six most important battleground states, suffering from enormous doubts about his age and deep dissatisfaction over his handling of the economy and the direction of the economy. John, talk us through what happened. Where did Democrats have a good night this week? And does any of that at all help Joe Biden? In Kentucky, the Democratic governor was able to convince voters that he was a moderate. Incumbents always have an advantage, and he won 52 percent of the vote. In Virginia, the Democrats outspent the Republicans, uh, enormous union money, and they had some support uh, from moderate pro-choice Republicans on the issue of abortion. And they got just over 50 percent of the vote and 51 percent of the legislative seats, and that's enough for a majority. Uh, there were other places where they didn't do as well. So Democrats individually around the country did well on Tuesday in most cases, but that completely separate issue is what President Biden does with that, because the same voters who often voted for Democrats tell people in the poll that you just cited they don't want Biden. 71 percent of voters in that poll said Biden is too old to be president. 62% said he was not mentally alert. And 51% of Democrats agreed with that. A majority of Democrats do not believe he should be their nominee or their president. I want to play a little uh, grab from this panel of uh, ABC panelists here talking about this. Have a listen, and we'll get your reaction. This is probably going to lead to a lot of Democrats increasing the chatter that Joe Biden should step aside and, and, and make room for another Democrat. And I think the problem that Democrats have is they don't know who that Democrat would be right now. Is this another nail in the coffin of Joe Biden's hopes to be even on the ticket next November? And if so, John Fund, who do you think could plausibly step in and take that role? Well, I think it's pretty clear that if Joe Biden had not picked Kamala Harris as his vice president, uh, the talk about removing Biden wouldn't be talk. He would have already been removed. A delegation would have gone up to the White House and said, you know, here's your gold watch, time to go home. But Kamala Harris fares even worse against Republicans if she's the Democratic nominee in polls. Therefore, the Democrats have a problem. Uh, what is it in The Sound of Music? There's a song saying, what do you do about a problem called Maria? What do you do about a problem called Kamala? And if they can find a way to ease her out or think they can beat her in the primaries or have the delegates override uh, her candidacy at the convention, they'll do it. Uh, I believe the Democrats uh, will not go to someone like Governor Gavin Newsom, a boring white male. They'll probably go to someone, if they don't have Kamala, that will placate some of the constituencies in their party. Remember, 63% of Democrats who vote in primaries are either women or minorities. Therefore, I think Governor Gretchen Whitmer is probably the sweet spot. She's from a swing state, Michigan. She's been elected twice. She's a woman and she's very combative and certainly not old. And, and John, walk us through this here, because we've talked a couple of times on this program before with various guests about how this could work and how superdelegates at that Democrat convention, and I think August, could at that late hour decide to make a, make a change. Would Democrats accept that if it had that sort of smoke-filled room kind of feel of, well, we've all voted, but no, here's your person? Well, if the alternative is to lose power, or have Joe Biden potentially fall uh, and not get up or completely dis be a disaster in the various three debates that he has to have with Republican candidates, then I think they'll do anything. Remember, the Democratic Party has shown consistently that it will erase every rule, it will blur every distinction, it will change every narrative in order to secure and keep power. Republicans, to some extent, the same. So. Whatever, whatever is necessary, they will do if they believe that Biden is more of a risk than a benefit to them. Sure, John. And, you know, one of the interesting things that you mentioned there, and I want to pick up on this, too, is this question of minority voters and identity politics. 
We're seeing now a bit of a shift of minority voters to Trump, to the Republican column, at least in the presidential polls. Some people on the left are really starting to panic about this. Have a listen to these guys on CNN. From women to Hispanic voters, black voters, 22 <clears throat> percent of black voters behind Trump. That is not seen in mm -hmm. the modern era for a Republican frontrunner, right? I mean, wow. It, it's startling. <laughs> Now, John, if you take a state like, let's say, Illinois, and which has a Chicago with a large minority population, if even part of that starts to swing Republican, that whole state could wind up going back in the Republican camp, couldn't it? Well, in theory, yes. But in reality, in almost all cases, that kind of high Republican vote among minorities would slip some when people finally show up at the polls. So I think it would put a state like Michigan, Wisconsin in, in, in competition, probably not Illinois. Um, not to mention the fact that Chicago, shall we say, has a way of adding and subtracting <laughs> votes that seem to benefit Democrats on the side. <laughs> I, I believe that, uh, I believe that Trump's support among minority voters is certainly higher than the traditional Republican. And one of the reasons for that is not so much that they are becoming Republicans, but they're completely disenchanted with the Democrats who they feel take them for granted. So remember, there are two factors with the minority vote. First is people can always stay home because they just don't like either candidate. And many minority voters feel politics has nothing to do with them anymore. Well, that subtracts from the Democrats because that normally would be a, a traditional support base for them. And the second thing is a lot of black men under the age of 35 uh, basically are very entrepreneurial. Uh, they believe that they wanna get ahead. They were getting ahead under Trump. They're not getting ahead under Biden. Personal wage growth has slipped dramatically price of everything is up and they're willing to listen less so with with black women but even so i believe there's a real potential for trump among ambitious and aspirational black younger men